Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here at the Rock Island Auction House today taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their April of 2015 premiere auction. And I wanted to take a look at another one of the early unusual cartridge guns developed during the time, around the time of the American Civil War. Of course, Rollin White and Smith and & Wesson had a patent and a license on the idea of boring a hole straight through a cylinder. So anyone else who wanted to legally manufacture a pistol had to come up with some way to do it without drilling a hole clear through the revolver cylinder. So the first company to do this uh, in any sort of large scale was a manufacturing company called Merwin and Bray. They had a revolver, it was called a Plants Patent Revolver, actually invented by two, name, two men named uh, W.C. Ellis and J.H. White. They invented this gun design, what's called a cup fire. Now the idea with this is that they had a, a brass cartridge case and it had a little flared rim at the front and instead of having a, a primer at the back like we would recognize today, it kind of had an inverted cup shape. Um, if you've done any reloading, think about what a primer looks like if you hold it upside down so that it's open. And the idea was you would load those cartridges through the front of the cylinder so they didn't have to drill a hole all the way through it and then the hammer would strike the inside of that cup at the back of the cartridge and fire the, the piece. So in this way it's similar to a rim fire, sort of, but a different shape. And this allowed them to avoid infringing on Rollin White's patent. These were fairly successful, quite a lot of them were made. And they were made in both 30 caliber and 42 caliber. This particular one is 42 caliber. And uh, why don't we take a closer look at it? Really this is a pretty simple design, uh, which explains why it was effective and popular in many ways. Um, esti it's estimated that about 20,000 of these guns were made in total, which is not bad for being an unusual cartridge as they are. You can see this has a sheath trigger with no trigger guard. We have a half cock notch, full cock, and firing the pistol. If I put it at half cock, I can go ahead and load and unload. We have a cutout here on the side of the frame so that you have space to load cartridges right there, which is also where you would eject them using this ejector rod. So there's our rod. It punches the cases forward because of course there's a rim at the end of the cylinder which is required to not infringe on the Rollin White patent. In order to pull the cylinder out, I put the gun at full cock and then this is our cylinder access pin. This little button locks it in place. So I push that in and then I can pull the axis forward and the cylinder simply drops out. Before we look at that, we can take a look at the internals of the gun. It's actually very standard, typical. We have a cylinder lock down here, which is spring-loaded and connected to that lever on the bottom of the frame. Our cylinder hand is right there. So when I cock the hammer, that hand lifts up, which rotates the cylinder. And then of course we have a port for the firing pin to come through right here. One interesting thing to notice is that that firing pin is, has quite a lot of protrusion into the, where the cylinder would be. That's because it needs to be fairly long to effectively reach and fire this cup fire style of cartridge. The front, you just have a location for the front axis of the cylinder and the barrel. Now, the cylinder itself, this is the front where you would load cartridges in, and you'll notice it looks very typical. The back has slightly smaller holes. You'll see that they are ovaled out just slightly at the bottom. That's to make sure there's enough clearance for the hammer to get in there. And then, interestingly, instead of having something like ratchet teeth, this has round pegs that the uh, cylinder hand acts on to rotate and lock the cylinder. So the idea is you load your cartridges from the front. They hit this uh, smaller uh, lip, rim, basically at the back so that they cannot be pushed all the way through the cylinder. It is not unknown to find these guns converted to either rim fire or frankly it could be center fire cartridges by drilling out the back of the cylinder. That would have been done later on after production and, and that does actually hurt the value of the guns a little bit, although to me that's an interesting example of period authenticity. Uh, once you got to the point where rim fire cartridges were readily available, I think it would make a lot more sense to convert the gun to use those rather than trying to continue to find a 
what became an obsolete type of ammunition. So, like I said, it's a pretty simple system. To reassemble it, all I have to do is drop the cylinder, put the hammer at full cock, cylinder drops in, our axis pin, let's line that up, snaps into place, we have a little spring, a little spring right there, holding it in place, cylinder is now locked up and ready to go. Well, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is another one of those real interesting short-lived uh, interim designs for cartridges before the, the modern centerfire cartridge really took over the market. So, if you'd like to add this to your own collection of Civil War era revolvers or unusual cartridge guns, it is for sale here at Rock Island. If you click the link in the description text below, that will take you to their catalog page on it. You can check out their high-res pictures, their catalogers description, and have everything right there to create an account and place a bid online, or come down here to the auction and participate yourself. Thanks for watching.